In this exercise, we're going to learn how to create railing in a project. This particular project doesn't really have the need for a straight run of railing. But what it does have is it already has some railing showing up here on our staircase. We're going to create an example of just a straight line of railing. And we're going to do that on the outside of the building so that you can see the process of how to do it. We'll also modify this existing railing so that it comes over and then comes back across so that nobody comes around and just falls into this hole here that's been created by the staircase and the opening. So to begin with, let's start by drawing a piece of railing just outside of our building. Ultimately, we will get rid of it, but this will give us a good feel for the process of drawing a railing. Underneath the Architecture tab, we're going to select on Railing. You'll see under Properties that this is a handrail rectangular. And when we start to draw where we want the handrail to go, Whatever the length of that line is that we get ready to draw, this handrail will be that exact length, and it'll be whatever that shape is as well. In this instance, let's draw a handrail out here on the outside of the building. Make sure with your drawing tools that it's a straight line. You can also draw a rail that happens to be curved, that's circular, that can be pretty much any shape that you want it to be. But for this example, we're just gonna do a straight line. Click once somewhere out here, now this is up on the second level, so this is going to look like it's floating in space here in a moment, but that's okay. Click over here, click the endpoint, and then click again. What we've done is we've drawn two lines, and the railing is going to follow the line from this point to the corner, and then wrap the corner and come back down. Click the big green check mark, and then move up to your 3D icon so we can take a look at it in 3D. You'll see there's the railing that we just drew from the endpoint around, wraps around the corner, and comes back. That's the basics behind drawing a railing. It's just a matter of selecting the railing command, picking the type of railing that you want off of the list, then drawing the path that you want the railing to follow. Now, if you want to make modifications to an existing railing, this is how you do it. We're going to select on this railing, and we're just going to delete it for right now. And we're going to work on a railing that already exists in our project. And this is a railing that was created when our staircases were created. So to get to there, we need to come back to our level one floor plan view. So just double click on level one. You'll begin to see that the railing in this instance is actually showing up as being a dashed line, at least through the majority of this. And now technically we can edit the railing from here, but I'd really like to edit it up on our level two. So just double click here on level two, and we can see that same railing, if we zoom in here on the top, coming around on level two. Right here is where our opening is. This is the top of our staircase, and you'd walk down the stairs in this direction. What I want to do is add another piece of railing that comes up to here and comes back across. To add the railing, instead of just drawing it in like we did in the previous example, select on the already existing railing. This railing was automatically created when the staircase was created. And then pick on Edit Path. This is the same process as if we would wanted to modify the path that the railing that we had just done in the previous steps. We could have selected on that railing, clicked on Edit Path, and then redrawn any of those lines that made up the path, and then the railing would have followed that path instead. This next part is key. Something you may have learned from Revit already is the ability to select on a line and then drag the line out by clicking on the grips. The problem is, is if you do that with a railing that's sloping down, like this one is, going down a staircase, it'll continue its slope on up if you drag it out in this direction. We don't want it to continue the slope. So to do that, we need to draw in another piece of line from here and draw this four inches down, click the endpoint of that line, and come straight over. And hit escape a couple of times to get out of that part of the command. What this has done is instead of continuing the slope that's going down the staircase, it's now going to be flat or flush in this direction and then come straight on across. If we click the big green check mark at this point, just click somewhere out in here, we can start to see that that's what's happening. We can see the shade along here, as opposed to what it looks like as it's sloping down. And we can also view this by placing a camera inside of here. By coming up to view, then clicking on 3D view, and then picking on camera. Click where we want to stand with the camera, and then use this cone and click somewhere in here, making sure that the staircase is completely inside of this cone of lines. We can see that this railing effect did go flat right at the end, and then it's moved across. And if you click on this little control dot, and then drag down, we can see that entire railing that we just put in. 
So the magic behind doing railings is either executing the railing command or selecting on the piece of railing. Then drawing in the path that you'd like that railing to follow, and the path will automatically follow that all the way on around no matter where you draw it to. In this exercise, we're going to review the different properties that make up a staircase. To understand this a little bit better, we need to activate the staircase command from underneath the architecture tab and then select on stair. When you do this, we'll see there's a type selector list underneath properties. And if you pick on that type selector list, we'll see that there's an assembled stair, a cast in place stair, as well as a precast stair. Now you can make your own staircases, that's not a problem but they're going to fit underneath one of these three different types of categories. Now I'm going to click just out here and now select on Edit Type. By doing this, we'll go into the Type Properties, which means the properties of the assembled staircase. We can see that there are supports, such as strainers on the right and left hand side, and whether or not they're going to be closed strainers, open strainers, or not have any strainers at all. This area under Type Properties also has a middle support. So if we'd put a check mark in there, we could specify that carriage, that strainer that's going straight up the center of the staircase, and how many of them there needs to be. There is a Cut Mark Type option here. So you can specify if in plain view you want a line going through the staircase indicating that above this line that the staircase should become a dash line. This is where you specify the way that line would look. There's also some hidden properties in here. And run type has that hidden property. It says 2 inch tread, 1 inch nosing, quarter inch riser. It's trying to indicate that this is what the construction of the tread is going to look like. That being said, if you click inside of the box, and if you pick on the little button, you'll see extra properties associated with your tread and risers, including what materials are they going to be made out of. Will there be a tread? Will there be a riser? If these boxes are not checked, then it simply will not have those entities there. I would think in most cases you'll probably have a tread, but there will be conditions where you might want to have an open staircase where you may not have any risers. You can choose the nosing profile. The nosing profile allows you to control the way that the staircase looks. So, in the case of a tread, it isn't just the edge of what that tread will look like. It can be what the entire tread would look like. The riser properties can be found underneath there. And we can click on OK to this. So that was underneath the run type. And the different supports that make up the staircase are showed here. I also want to point out that there is underneath family, system family cast in place, and precast stair. These are different styles of staircases. Some of the properties will be related to these. For instance, in the case of cast in place stair, this would be the kind of staircase that would be just poured on site. The entire staircase is made out of concrete. And what properties would you like to have that style of staircase to have? Ultimately, if you want to be able to come in and adjust your staircase properties, execute the staircase command, be sure to click on the Edit Type button underneath Properties, and through here in the Type Properties dialog box, you can make changes and edit just about all the properties associated with a staircase. In this lesson, we'll learn how to place a staircase in our building model. To begin, we need to zoom in where the staircase is going to be. And in this case, it's going to be inside of this space right over here. So, zoom into this area so it's roughly in the center of your screen. Now, come underneath the Architecture tab, and we're going to find the Stair command right above the word Circulation. After selecting on the stair command, I want to point out that underneath properties here on the type selector list, it's currently a 7 inch max riser 11 inch tread staircase. If we select on the type selector list, we'll see there's actually three different kinds of staircases currently loaded into this project. Now you can create your own staircases with their own set of properties, but the important thing to remember here is that this assembled staircase, each riser can only be 7 inches high and the treads are all going to be 11 inches deep. Also, when we start to draw, we're currently on the first floor. The base level is going to be on level 1, which is the first floor level. And the staircase knows it's going to go up to level 2. If the staircase should have went up to a different level, we could have selected in here and pulled off of the list a different level. 
but in this case, level two works just fine for us. Now let's start the process of drawing. We'll see that here along the options bar, there's a location line, and one of these options here is run center. Well, what this means is, is if we start drawing right now, it's gonna start drawing the staircase, but it's gonna be centered on the area that we draw in. And I don't really wanna draw the staircase right down the center of the staircase. This is a fairly tight area, so as a result of that, I'd like to draw this staircase from one of the edges of the staircase. To do that, I'm going to come underneath the location line and change this run center to be exterior support right. This will take us to the far right-hand side of our staircase. The actual run width, this is how wide our staircase will be. I'm just going to tell this to be a 3 foot 6 inch wide staircase and it will automatically insert a landing in when we draw it in. One last thing to take a look at is up here going across the top, make sure that you have run highlighted and that straight is the option that's currently highlighted. You can do a variety of other kinds of staircases, including a spiral staircase, these L-shaped staircases. Now when you see the L's and the ones that turn back on themselves, these are ones that do that shape without a landing. But the kind of staircase we're doing will have a landing, and that's the reason why we've chosen not to choose one of these two types. Coming to the drawing area, in the exact location we might modify after the fact, but just click roughly the middle location right along the edge of this wall. Start to draw up, and as you do this, you'll see treads being added, risers being added. We can also see that down at the bottom of the staircase, it's given us a count of how many risers have been created and how many risers are still left to be created. And it knows this based on the maximum rise, as well as the level to level heights. Change this to be 9 and 9, so 9 risers created, 9 remaining, and then click. Next, move over here, and roughly lined up with the other staircase, click again, and then come straight down. You'll see it's tried to automatically add a landing there, there in the middle. And I'm not being really accurate when I click, so you don't have to click necessarily where you see the last tread. You can click somewhere out here in space, and that will finish up your staircase. Once the staircase has been drawn in place like this, click on the big green check mark. And then it will draw in that staircase. Let's take a better look at what this staircase actually looks like by putting a camera inside of this space and taking a photo in this direction. To do that, you just come underneath the View tab, move over here to the Words 3D view, and then pick camera off of the list. Stand just inside of the doorway here by clicking, point the camera in this direction, and then click. When you do this, you'll now have a nice picture of what the inside of this staircase looks like. If you want to adjust the width of this so you can see more of it, just click on these dots and pull these dots up or to the side. This area right here, by the way, is where the second floor starts. And we can see that the opening that makes up this space is currently a little bit too big because the staircase is not currently attaching itself to the floor. But we can always come back in there later and clean up that condition. But as you can see, in order to place a staircase inside of a space, and I'm going to go into a plan view to show this, you'll select on the Architecture tab, choose the Stair command off of the list, Make sure to pick your location point so that it's in the right spot. When we first had it, it said center, and that would have drawn that outline straight down the center of the staircase. Instead, we picked exterior support right, which meant that we could specify where the outer walls were at, and then draw it down in this direction, and also specify the width of the staircase so that it will fit appropriately inside of the space. Opening objects are objects that create openings in floors, ceilings, and roofs. Earlier on, when we were first designing our floors, we put an opening object in this space here so that we'd have a location to eventually put our staircase into. Now that our staircase is here, we need to make an adjustment to this opening object so that the hole doesn't show up right here. In fact, we want the edge of our floor to be right up here, right at the edge of the staircase, so you can make the smooth transition from the landing, down the staircase, down the lower level. To do that, we need to highlight on the edge of the opening. When you click on it, it'll all turn blue. Then, come up to Edit Sketch. 
When you do this, you'll get these pink, purple, magenta lines going all the way around the area where that opening is located at. Now this opening goes from the first floor all the way up through level three. So we have a nice big staircase area. Now when we make this adjustment by clicking on this line and pulling it on up right to the edge of the staircase and then let go. When we made that adjustment, it's not only made a hole here or an opening here on level two, but because this opening object goes up through level three, we have now created an opening that also goes up through our third floor level up above. Now that this is the shape that we want it to be, click on the big green check mark. We can see that the floor is now added material and it's coming all the way over right to the edge of where this opening object is at. If you click out in space, we can see that the blue goes away. Now we're still going to need to add some railing here so people don't fall off the edge and go right into the hole. And if you need to modify an opening object, it's just a matter of selecting on the object, coming up to edit sketch, and then editing where the perimeter of that opening should be. And then from there on out, click the big green check mark, and then every floor that opening goes through will now have a hole for your staircase to rise up through. The railings we see here are all railings that come with Revit 2014. If we zoom in to take a look at these different railings, you'll see that this one is made up of a bunch of glass panels. It also has some railings going maybe across the top. Here we have some individual balusters, as well as a handrail, and then the top. Here we have a group of railings as well as some balusters that are standing straight up. And that's how these individual railings are made. If we select any of these railings, in this case, I'm gonna select on the glass panel bottom fill, we can go to edit type to see some of their properties. A few of the properties that we need to look at begin with the top rail. That's this particular bar that's going all the way across the top. For this one, it's three foot tall off of the ground. It also has elliptical one and a half by one and one eighth for the type. Now what this indicates is that there's an elliptical shape that has those dimensions and it's being swept the length of whatever the railing is. I'm gonna go back into the properties by selecting on the railing and edit type. So that's what this is right here. If there's a handrail, oftentimes you'll see that handrail information here on the list. Other times, that handrail information will be underneath rail structure. And if you click edit to that, in this case, we can see there are two rails. One is two foot eight inches off the ground. The other is two foot four inches off of the ground. And they're both one inch square. And those are these two rails that we see here. I'm gonna click on okay. Now, so far what we haven't seen is what makes up these panels. Well, what makes up the panels is if we select on edit type one more time, and go into baluster placement and select on edit. Each of these panels are considered their own individual baluster, whether it be the steel frame or the glass panel, which is two feet by eight feet. That particular family, which is a family just like a table would be or a sink would be, gets repeated again and again and again along the length of this particular railing structure. And some of the distances in between them are controlled through over here. There is also the start post, corner post, and end post for these. And if I click cancel just to get out of this menu so we can see it, and I'm gonna pull my type properties over, this is one of those corner posts. And this is gonna be repeated at the start, as well as any time that this has a corner, this post will now show up. So let's take a look at these properties again on some of these other railings. I'm gonna click on OK to this, and zoom back out, select on this rail here, and then click on edit type. What we have, three foot six high, is the top of this rail. And it's a rectangle, it's two inches by two inches. There's also a handrail in this case, positioned on the left hand side, that's circular and one and a half inches around. If we go to the baluster placement and click on edit, we'll see that every four inches, it's supposed to repeat this baluster square family again and again and again. I'm gonna click on cancel the both of those menus to get out and now select on this last railing and pick on edit type. If we take a look underneath the baluster placement in this case and select on edit, 
we can see that there's a baluster round as well as baluster round all the way on down. These are going to be put into place every four feet on center or at the start, corner, or ends of wherever this railing condition is at. And we can see there's one of those balusters right there and every four feet they're being drawn in. Now I'm going to hit on cancel to get out of this menu. I'm going to come up to edit next to rail structure. And here we can see each of these rails going straight up as well as their height off of the ground and their overall one inch diameter around. This is the shape and this is their height. As far as materials go, it's currently listed as being by category. But if someone would click inside there, you could specify that this is made out of stainless steel, aluminum, PVC, whatever material you like to be made out of, just specify it through here and in the materials. So railings, they're made up of rails as well as balusters. They also have top rails and handrails associated with them. And all their properties can be found from underneath Edit Type in the Properties dialog box.